Hi guys, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. We are here with our female human noble Eurydice Kuslin, and we are just about to leave Lothering. I did want to mention a couple of things. I have uh, downloaded a mod that makes my cursor a little bigger. Uh, as you can see, uh, when you play on a higher resolution like 2K or 4K, it makes the UI and the cursor like teeny tiny to the point where I was having trouble seeing it in battle and I would be only able to move because I couldn't actually see my cursor. I couldn't find it in, in the mess. So hopefully by making it a little bigger, it's about the size of the standard mouse cursor now on my computer, I'll be able to actually see it. Uh, I already have a mod that uh, makes the UI and like the subtitles and stuff a little bigger because they were really tiny too. So if you have that problem, I recommend doing that. So let's go. intense. Bad dreams, huh? Uh, yeah. Um, must have been something I ate. Drank more like, as in the tainted blood, remember? <laughs> you see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the horde and we feel it just as they do that's why we know this is really a blight hmm. the arch demon is that the dragon i don't know if it's really a dragon but it sure looks like one but yes that's the arch demon it takes a bit but eventually you can block the dreams out some of the older gray wardens say they can understand the arch demon a bit but i sure can't Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Aww. Hmm. Thank you, Alistair. I appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. <laughs> Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Aww. We got a little brownie point for being nice about it. Okay, so this is our first time in camp, but technically this is like a just a temporary camp. It's not our uh, main camp. We won't get that until the uh, second time we come back to camp, where uh, I'll have a couple of mods, like a storage chest and the sleep until dawn mod uh, that will work. But as for now, they are not here. So we go talk to Bodon and Sandal and Levy Dryden so we can get those quests started. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Um... Yeah. You're free to stay. Just mind yourselves. Wonderful. Thank the kind lady, won't you, boy? Thank you, kind lady. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. All right. So let's go ahead and... Hello. Get the boy's a bit simple, but... He's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. Um, what enchantments does he do? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor. Though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform, but my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! <laughs> and there you have it. I want some enchanting done. Enchantment! Okay. Um, let's see. Well, throw that on there. 
Slow and paralyzed runes are always really good, so to get a paralyzed rune soon. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on my offhand dagger. And I think we're good for now. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. So what's your story exactly? Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. <laughs> um, lost glory? Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thados, from majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin far to the west. <clears throat> They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspawn took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. No balls. They're touchy like that. <laughs> Um, what happened then? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigs. Th they're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Better to do something with them than leave them to rot. I mean, that's what we do. We scavenge. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. Hmm. Fascinating story. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Um, where do these goods come from? Look, we... We don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the lost tigers, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Relax, we do the same thing. It's better than having the Darkspawn take it. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah. These are dark times, indeed. Dark times, my friend. You didn't mention your son. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true. What I think of him is one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Blood isn't that important. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. 
He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it at least. You heard any rumors? I hear news from Dinnerum that Tian Logain has been declared the new regent. It makes sense, his daughter being the queen. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Let me see your wares. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Okay, uh, so one of the things that happens with this kind of um, temporary version of the camp is that if you buy some of his goods, like the um, books that give you an extra spell or an extra talent or something, they'll be back once you come back to camp the second time, so you can get two versions if you have enough money, which is always nice. So, we'll see if we can do that. Okay, so... I think we have enough money, so I'm going to go ahead and get that skill book. Uh, yes, uh, Tome of Physical Technique. We barely have enough money, so yay! Alright, um, that's a gift for Morgan. Uh, all of these here, like your Grey Warden hand puppets and all of this kind of stuff, and the ugly boots and things like that. They are from the Feast Day um, Gifts and Pranks uh, DLC uh, from Bioware. And they kind of just kind of give you a way to really play with the approval system because for the big gifts, they give you a plus 50 to approval and for the pranks, they give you a minus 50 to approval. So it's pretty significant. So, but the problem is, is that uh, a lot of companions, if you level up their approval too quickly, it will bug them and you will kind of not be able to get uh, some of their personal quests and stuff and some of their conversations they'll just be completely locked out so I usually will kind of get them both the um, prank and the gift and just give them both that way their approval stays where it is and they still get the gift um, these down here are also from it but they're a lot smaller like they only give I think like plus five or something like that or minus five it, it's not very much so it's, it's a lot better way to kind of do it if you're trying to uh, play with the approval system uh another thing is um for the dog uh he doesn't like get the updates like when your companion's approval goes up you know sometimes they'll get a, a bonus to cunning or a bonus to strength or something because they're inspired by your leadership well your your pup's always at 100 he loves you unconditionally so he doesn't get those but if you give him the stick uh he will get those things so i'm gonna go ahead and get the stick and i'm going to <laughs> Get the protective cone too, just as a safety measure. We won't make him wear it for a very long, because it's terrible. It really is. Alrighty, so let's go over and talk to Levy. This will start the um, Soldier's Peak DLC, uh, where you can go and reclaim the lost uh, Warden's base, which is nice. You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy, Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? No. Um, I'm Eurydice and I've never heard of you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. How did you know, Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath. I'm a bit nervous. Honored to be here, really. No, oh, he's sweet. Uh, go ahead and tell your tale. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden, some sort of internal business. 
Me and a mess of other warden sympathizers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting all Legion wardens in the kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. Okay, keep going. So that's why I was there when the wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the king. The first wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The king himself went with the wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Aldland's decree, and the wardens came back to Ferelden for good. Hmm. Why were the Grey Wardens cast out by Ireland? People say it's because the wardens have become terribly unpopular. Just soaking up ties and not doing a bleeding thing for the kingdom. I say that's bollocks, as recent events have shown. Agreed. Um, so Merrick rescinded the decree just like that? Merrick was a bit of a visionary. A powerful mind, that one. In his travels with the Wardens, he must have seen how important their cause was. And been moved by it. Doubt that's a full story. There was some talk at court that he did it to improve relations with Orzammar. That might have factored into it. But make no mistake, King Merrick was a giant among men. Duncan was an easy man to like. <laughs> that he was. Well, I thank you for your part in bringing the wardens here. Oh, your stomach's all a flutter. <laughs> You're welcome. So what promise did Duncan make you? Well, as you know, my family's name is Mud around noble circles. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. Hmm, that's a bit drastic. And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Olin died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Hmm. So what favorite did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. I've never even heard of it. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did. And I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Hmm. How will reclaiming the peak help the wardens? Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. Hmm. Why didn't Duncan help you? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. Hmm. What do you need from me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place... Well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it, at least? Mm, sure. Your family's faith will be rewarded. I'll help you. A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Okay, so let's go ahead and give our puppy... his um new gifts okay so <laughs> poor puppy oh that's so terrible i gotta get it off him that's terrible oh my god that's just that is just awful here wear that i promise to destroy it it's just wow <laughs> sorry puppy here, have a stick. 
See? And by giving him the stick, it gives him all of the minor, moderate, major, and um, massive dexterity that he would get. So it's a, it's a good way to get those bonuses that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. Um, I'll go ahead and um, show you where they are. Um, let's see. There we go. See, he's got all those little bonuses now, which is nice. All right, so why don't we go ahead and go get the control rod for Shale. Another thing is that uh, the Zevron ASAP mod should trigger, so we should get the encounter with uh, Zevron. Uh, the only downside about getting him this early is that he may um, beat us severely. It, it's happened before. So uh, we may have to do this a couple times depending on how the battle goes. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's take Alistair. Yes. Liliana, she is usually um, gives you approval points for um, taking Zavron into your party. Indeed. Alistair, you can kind of talk him down. I think, I think you still get like a little bit of disapproval, but it's not very much. Morgan definitely doesn't like it. Sten doesn't really care, so I think we might go ahead and just take yes. him. Yes. So any of the gold ones mean they are um, part of the DLCs. This one here uh, will trigger the um, Return to Ostagar DLC, but I like to wait to do that one until I have Wynn because her and Alistair, they both have um, kind of more dialogue and stuff than anyone else since they were actually at Ostagar. So they're kind of good team to take. That's for uh, Soldier's Peak. And then this will start uh, getting shale. Oh, so it should be Zevron. Yes, it is. We're going to probably uh, possibly get killed. So let's see how this goes. Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Mm. Follow me. Mm. I'll take you to them. Does anyone else think this is a trap? No? Just me? Okay. Well. This is the mod I have for him. The Grey Warden dies here. Uh. Oh! I'm going after the mage first. Let's see which one first. Ah! Obviously, we're going to wake him up and talk to him. Mm. Oh, what? I... Oh, 
Oh, I rather thought I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Yeah, watch yourself. That could be easily rectified. Of that, I have no doubt. You are most skilled. If you haven't killed me, however, you must have kept me alive for some purpose, yes? Oh, don't try to sweet-talk me, you hot assassin, you. Uh, you seem awfully glib for a prisoner. <laughs> it is my way, or so I am told. Let's see then. I assume you kept me alive to ask me some questions, yes? If so, let me save you time and get right to the point. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. <laughs> I'm rather happy you failed. So would I be in your shoes. For me, however, it sets a rather poor precedent, doesn't it? Getting captured by a target seems a tad detrimental to one's budding assassin career. <laughs> Too bad for you, then. Yes, it's true. Too bad for me. <laughs> Um, what are the Antiva Crows? I can tell you that. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva, very powerful and renowned for always getting the job done, so to speak. Someone went to great expense to hire this man. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the Crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not for being good assassins, I see. Oh, fine. Is that what you Fereldens do? Mock your prisoners? <laughs> Such cruelty. <laughs> you came all the way from Antiva? Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. Um, who hired you to kill us? A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Loghain, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. Does that mean you're loyal to Loghain? I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. And now that you've failed that service? Oh, well, that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. And between you and me? Isn't that what we're establishing now? Mm. When were you to see him next? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. If you had failed? What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Mm -hmm. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Would you like to meet my daggers, stabby and jabby? How much were you paid? I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Then why are you one? Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever you happen to fancy. Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. Uh, thanks, I'll take that under advisement. You seem like a bright girl. I'm sure you have other options. Uh, why are you telling me all this? <laughs> why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Aren't you at least loyal to your employers? Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. I'm listening. Make it quick. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. Uh, can I expect the same amount of loyalty from you? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing, that's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing, in which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. 
And what's to stop you from finishing the job later? Poisoning my food, or stabbing me in the night, or any of that? To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Won't they come after you? Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? You must think I'm royally stupid. I think you're royally tough to kill, and utterly gorgeous. Not that I think you'll respond to simple flattery, Charmer. but there are worse things in life than serving the whims of a deadly sex goddess. Oh, goodness. He certainly knows what to say. What do you want in return? Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. Marginally. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? Why would I want your service? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. I could also warn you should the Antivan Crows attempt something more sophisticated, now that my attempts have failed. I could also stand around and look pretty if you prefer. <laughs> Warm your bed. Fend off unwanted suitors, no? Hmm. Okay, we're romancing Alistair, so we're not gonna say this. Uh, hmm. No. <laughs> I like a woman who knows exactly what she wants. I really do. So, what shall it be? I'll even shine armor. You won't find a better deal, I promise. <sighs> All right. I accept your offer. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Mm. We could use him. I mean, we need all the help we can get. Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. <laughs> Welcome, Zevran. Having an Antivan crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh, you are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers, surely. Or maybe not. <laughs> I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Okay, we are going to... Vashadan. Go ahead and bring him yes. in. Little bit of disapproval from Alistair, but it's not very much. It's better than probably Morrigan's, so. Um, it's a good idea to uh, go ahead and set up Severon's tactics now. There's a bug that sometimes happens. Um, if you mess with people's tactics when you're at camp sometimes like the presets and stuff can just show up as blank i'm not really sure why but it's just kind of one of those things so but if you mess with their tactics outside of camp you don't have this problem so let's see mm, i might end up respecting him i haven't decided yet Definitely want him as aggressive. Put him as a scrapper. For now, that'll be fine. And I'll just, let's see. Uh, let's check out this outfit. Never used this morph before and it comes with the outfit, so I'm not really uh, familiar with it. It's got a long sword and a crow dagger. Hmm. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and give him Oath Keeper, since it is a better sword. Um, and I'll go ahead and give him this, since I'm not using it at the moment. He does have a bow on him. Um, I think I'll go ahead and take that he's gonna be a melee so Let's see. 
Leather gloves. Hmm. Five decks, eight coming, improves backstabs, messy kills. Oh, that, that's nice. It's actually set up pretty pretty good on that front. Uh, he has a belt. I think we're going to go ahead and give him that because it's a pretty good amulet. Okay, um, yeah, he can't wear that. So for now, I think we're good. So let's go ahead and just kind of loot everyone. Oh, Fred's a red Jenny. Get something later for a quest about that. And I'm off. Mm, doesn't look like there's anything up here. Nope. So. go ahead and leave and go get the control rod for shale. Alright. Go ahead and grab these yes. elf roots. Huh. Have to forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people traveling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now, what do I do? Um, what are you doing out here? Oh, waiting for my helper to find the damn mule, of course. Freezing! Oh, oh, I suppose you meant <laughs> why am I out here? Yeah. As in this part of the country. Allow me to introduce myself. Felix de Grosbois, merchant and entrepreneur, at your service. Um, I'm Eurydice. Pleased to meet you. I don't normally take this route, but with the war, I was hoping for a bit of luck and good weather in the mountains. <clears throat> Sadly, I've had neither. Ugh, this trip has been one miserable disaster after another. I don't suppose you'd consider helping a fellow out? Mm, help a fellow out how? Of all the other things that went wrong, the worst is this artifact I brought in Jada. It's a control rod, I'm told, for a golem. No point in me keeping it, however, as I'll never get to use it. But, uh, maybe you could? Uh, what does it do? The dwarf I brought it from said it activates and controls a golem. So long as you have it in your hand, the golem does what you say. Might be useful, no? I mean, you look like the sort who could use one, yes? Uh, what's the catch? The catch? Uh, yeah, I uh, suppose it is a catch, isn't it? The catch is that the golem didn't come with the rod. <laughs> it's supposed to be down in a village down south, waiting to be activated. Even if I could get down there, which I can't, <laughs> I understand the place has been overrun by Darkspawn. That's not such an issue for adventurous types like yourself, surely. Or I'm hoping that's so, at least. <laughs> um, how do I know it'll work? The fellow I brought it from is a long-standing contact. He didn't want to come to Ferelden, however, with all our... troubles. <laughs> he said he got it from the man who owned this golem. But, to be honest, I have no idea if it will work. Hence... The low, low price? <laughs> what do you say? How much is this low, low price? Nothing. I just don't want to have to lug around something that might be taken for a gemstone by some bandit. To be honest, I don't even know if it'll be useful to you. 
I paid too much to simply throw it away. All right, I guess I'll take it. Just as well. As I mentioned before, you'll find the golem down south, in a town called Honleith. I'll mark it here on your map. Just hold up the rod and say Dulaf Gar. That will wake the golem up, so I'm told. I hope it works. Um, and if it doesn't? Maybe you could look up the fellow who owned the golem before. If he's still about, that is. <laughs> Best of luck to you then. Now, I guess it's up to me to find that mule myself. Hmm, okay. See, now it opened up a uh, Hunleith down there where Shell is. Um, it's a pretty long quest, so I think I'm going to save it for the next episode and just go back to camp and kind of talk to everybody a little bit. Um... I don't understand. You look like a woman. Uh... What's not to understand about that? You are a Grey Warden, so it follows that you can't be a woman. That doesn't make any sense. So you understand my confusion, then? Uh... Well, I'm confused now. Women are priests, artisans, shopkeepers, or farmers. They don't fight. Mm. That's not a universal truth. Some women fight. Why would women ever wish to be men? That makes no sense. Um, well, none of this makes any sense, Sten. Exactly. Uh, I'm a woman and I'm fighting. One of those things can't be true. A person is born, Gunari or human or elven or dwarf. He doesn't choose that. The size of his hands, whether he is clever or foolish, the land he comes from, the color of his hair, these are beyond his control. We do not choose, we simply are. But a person can choose what to do. Can they? We'll see. Okay. Well, apparently he liked that, so... Yay! Alright, so... We'll just talk to everybody a little bit, just to kind of get to know everyone. Uh, I do not exhaust all conversation options very quickly. I, I like to kind of spread it out throughout the game. That way, you know, it's not talking to a party member and they literally have nothing to say, like, really, really soon, because that's boring. So, let's start with our puppy. And he gets cool little scenes with the various party members and stuff, which is, which is cute. Oh, why you little? Did you just jump at the side of your own shadow again? Oh, you're so funny. Such rapier wit. <laughs> Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Um, good boy. Teach that silly Alistair a lesson. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. <laughs> That'll teach me. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Alistair. What do you need? See, that's his neutral response. So he doesn't hate us, but we're not friends yet either. Ask away. So what can a Templar do exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Mm, so Templars use magic themselves? You could call it that, sure. The Chantry doesn't look on it the same way, however. Of course since they don't. It's really our talents only work on mages. Against a regular person, I'm just a guy in a metal suit. Mm, have you hunted many mages? No, I never actually became a full Templar. Duncan recruited me before I took my vows. I was only present during one harrowing. The ritual that they test the mages with. It's not unlike our joining, really. And just as deadly. The girl they tested, she had a demon put inside her to see if she could resist. And she couldn't. We had to end it quickly. I have to say I didn't have much interest in becoming a Templar after that. Hmm, seems like Templars could run the Chantry. You'd think that. 
But it's not so. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Oh, that's horrible. Well, they do it, and they feel perfectly justified. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective, or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. <laughs> what do you need? Ask away. It's always best to make sure to ask them, the different party members who give out specializations, if they can teach others, even if you already know the specialization, because uh, there's ways to get approval and stuff. I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, she made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. And as long as you are like, hey, very well, I'll respect your word, he'll give you approval points. And then when you reach the first kind of milestone with the approval, which is a uh, minor... It's either strength or constitution with him, I can't remember. But once you reach that, he will teach you without getting mad at you asking. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. This is not something small you're asking, after all. Okay. Mm, let's do Sabden next. We'll just keep going. Why are we stopping? Um, we're working together. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Are you all right? You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. You said you were in the army? I am. Um, why would the Canaris send soldiers here? The Antam are the eyes, hands, and mouth of the Kunari. We are how my people know the world. Ah. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, human. So you must know your way around the battlefield. Some of them. They aren't all alike. Are you always this bad about answering questions? Generally. <laughs> I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. What's your hurry? What a strange language you speak. You say hurry, where I would say duty. No, yeah, we have to sleep and eat and rest occasionally. It's not your duty to handle the light. No, it is yours, and you are chatting with me instead. Pardon me. I've never seen a canary before. Tell me about your people. No. <laughs> um... I wasn't expecting that. Get used to disappointment. <laughs> People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. <laughs> oh, so that get used to disappointment. I think that was a Princess Bride reference, which is hilarious. I love that movie. A um, little hostile, aren't we? Many humans have said that to me. I do not understand it. If I were indeed hostile, you would be bleeding. <laughs> so this is you being calm and helpful? Couldn't you tell? Yes. You know what? Just follow orders and you'll do fine. As you wish. Okay. <laughs> um, Sten is kind of an interesting character when it comes to his conversations. Uh, some of his uh, conversations will not trigger uh, unless you take him to certain places at certain times and stuff uh, and they will kind of like uh, trigger under his uh, I want to talk about something you mentioned branch uh, I will be trying to trigger as many of those as possible so I'll make sure to uh, mention it whenever it comes up uh, let's talk to you Sir Gilmore yes what can I do for you um, I want to ask you about what happened of course what happened at the castle? Maker knows. 
we were all caught by surprise. Howe had been on good terms with your family for years. Nobody suspected anything. Yeah. The soldiers arrived in the morning as planned to march to battle, but they attacked us instead. I tried so hard to save the castle and everyone in it. I could not. It's not your fault. I know that, to an extent. I just can't stop thinking that all my hard work and training could not prevent that from happening. You did your best. Thank you. You are very kind. But this taught me a hard lesson I will not forget. My friend, I have to admit that I am curious about the role and responsibilities of a Grey Warden. Okay? I understand that the rites involved in the ceremony are kept secret. But please tell me, how does one become a Grey Warden? Well, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Just drink some Darkspawn blood, and there you go! So, drinking Darkspawn blood makes you a Grey Warden? I'm sure it must entail something else aside from that. My only future was to be a mere soldier. A knight at the castle, or perhaps an army commander someday. But when Duncan arrived and showed interest in me, I was ecstatic. I was thinking that maybe I could not only fight at your side, but become a warden myself. I don't really know how to do that, but if we find someone who does... Um, but it's not so easy, it has other unknown ingredients. It's a shame that you don't know anything else about the joining. There must be some document still. Somewhere. Maybe? Um... Joining is dangerous, but good rewards. That makes sense. Only the fittest survives. I'd like to think Duncan saw something in me that led him to believe I would survive as well. <sighs> How I wish I could get an opportunity like yours. Um, I guess it's a risk every hopeful has to take. One that I'm still willing to take, if I ever have the chance. I'd like to live that life. Okay. Meliana. Yes? Um, I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Um, this vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. You dreamed of the blight? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was. A single beautiful rose. It was as though the Maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. And this made you want to help me? In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? Mm, I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Mm, Zephron. Here I am. Hmm. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. What does it take to become an assassin? You know, not like I already am one. <laughs> well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training. The sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Um, you did quite well, no doubt. Within the crows, I did. But it has been something the crows have devoted a great deal of time to perfecting. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. 
debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. Hmm. Sounds like it could be useful. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. Uh, so let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Here I am. You teach others to be an assassin. Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. I swore to the crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. Oh, very well, I'll respect your word. If you are truly insistent, well, let me think about it. The crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? Hello. What do you wish of me? I'd like to ask you something. If you must. How did you become a shape changer? I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike. Dragging the young boy, kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing <laughs> legend. Um, your mother has been doing this for a long time then? Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? Um... Can you change into other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. Um, can anyone become a shape changer? Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. Do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me. It is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human. I am under no illusions to the contrary. What do other animals think of you when you're changed? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus, they cannot speak, even were I to ask. Never heard of magic like that before, but it's really cool. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. That's good. Such traditions need to be preserved. I am surprised you think so. Still, it is a pleasant thing to hear. That's all I wanted to know. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? <laughs> um, I think they sound useful. A most practical opinion. Far more so than any man I have spoken to. But enough of such talk. Let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. Hmm. What do you wish of me? I'd like to ask you something. If you must. Can you teach others to become shape changers? 
Uh, one thing, uh, this is actually a bugged dialogue. In vanilla, when you click this now, she will actually agree to teach you, but once she likes you, if you wait till then to click it, she will say she won't. Uh, but I have a mod that fixes that, so. Possibly, if I had the desire to. I do not. As you wish. Okay, I think we've talked to everybody. I uh, just wanted to show you a couple of the camp mods that I have. This is just a storage chest mod. It works a lot like the one from um, Warden's Peak that you get in vanilla. So you can just basically just throw anything in there and it makes life easier. That way you don't have to go up to Warden's Peak constantly. And then I also have the Sleep Until Dawn mod. Uh, you can sleep by yourself. You can sleep with uh, your doggy in the tent with you. I have a mod that makes it so I'm still wearing my armor. Uh, you can also, if you have a love interest, you can kind of cuddle in there and sleep together, which is nice. Uh, one thing to note when you do use this, uh, the camp will change once you wake up. It'll actually be daytime and stuff. So like the storage chest won't be there. And if you give like gifts to companions and stuff, it could bug out. So you always want to make sure you don't do any of that stuff in the daytime version of the camp. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you. I think I'm just gonna go to bed alone this time. See, it's all daytime and there my, my chest is gone and everything. So, but I think this is a good place to kind of end the episode. Uh, next time we will definitely head straight for Hanleith to get Shale because Shale is amazing. So definitely want to get her as quickly as possible. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Very much appreciated. Thanks guys!